Okay. Uh, this trailer began its uh, journey about three years ago uh, when Walmart came to us and commissioned us to build this, and they had a vision for the trailer that it would be lighter weight, it would be more aerodynamically friendly, and that it could you know, add to their bottom line through sustainability. So as the, de the, the vision developed for this trailer, what we did was look at some unconventional materials that had not been used in the past, only on an experimental basis. Um, so we went to our suppliers, and one of the um, construction techniques that came out of this trailer that is used in the side walls, the roof, and the floor, with a few twists, is the fiber uh, composite technology. Basically consists of a core panel, which is very thin, but the skins on each side are fiber composite. They're oriented in such a way that when the panel bends, they have a high tensile strength. And that's very much like a lot of the composite uh, materials that we use today, every day in the trucking industry work. The only difference is, is that this composite is a lot lighter. Right now it's a lot more expensive, um, but it, it, it acts in the same principle as many composite constructions do today. So we did the roof and the walls and the floor. Uh, the front wall was done very similar to the same way, except it wasn't a big panel that had to be built. It was basically a configuration or shape. So that had to be done in a little bit different fashion than we did the other components. Uh, the uh, next technology that we used in the construction of this trailer is the exterior lighting. Um, the exterior lighting is very much brighter than the typical LED construction that we have today. The typical LED lights of the day are, are very much advanced, but this one goes a step further in that it exceeds the DOT requirements. They are much brighter, they are lower profile, and the amperage draw is very, very low on these lights. So the need for the energy to burn them is much less. We also <clears throat> put a unique suspension on this trailer that as the load inside of the trailer diminishes, a sensor automatically will lift the front axle which means that you, know, you don't need both axles to carry a diminished load, you only need one. So when those tires are no longer in contact with the road, we have less rolling resistance and therefore we get better fuel economy with this trailer. Overall, this trailer is about 4,000 pounds lighter than a conventional trailer. And if you can believe the numbers on weight that are generally published, Every 3,000 pounds saves about 1% in fuel economy. That is the biggest advantage when we're doing regional deliveries where we have a lot of starting and stopping. But where we pick up our biggest advantage is long haul over the road type hauls where there's not a lot of starting and stopping, but getting stretched out on the interstate, that's where our aerodynamics really starts to kick in. So we made a unique aerodynamic package for this trailer, which included the shape of the nose. It also included the rounded rear end so that air could flow off of the back much easier. And we have a lot more coverage underneath the trailer from that parasitic drag that we get as it goes down the road. Uh, this trailer is uh, absolutely 100% DOT legal. Um, there's nothing about this trailer that doesn't allow it on the road. There's nothing about the construction of the trailer where we have to treat it any differently than any other trailer. Um, one of the biggest disadvantages of this trailer is just the extreme cost of it. Now, when you build one, the costs are very high. When you try to demonstrate a goal, there's a lot of costs always associated in building one. For instance, we made a mold for this front wall. That mold can actually make three fronts. We only made one, so we're literally not using the full cost right. of the mold uh, for this. So this trailer, as a one-off model, would probably cost 10 times more than the standard over-the-road trailer. If we were to put it in production, I'm sure we could get it down to two or three times the cost 
of a typical trailer today. But uh, generally, the public is uh, the customers that we deal with, the organizations that buy this equipment, just can't swallow that kind of expense right now. However, carbon fiber materials, which is where most of the costs come from, 10 years ago was $150 a pound. Today, it's $10 a pound. If it continues this historical trend, you're going to see fiber composite appear in a lot more automobiles and a lot more over-the-road equipment on the vehicle. So now that we have this bar set and we know that we can do it, all we're doing is waiting on the time that's right where we can. Yeah. the materials are more affordable. Let's hope that time is soon. Yes. Right.